Humans, for the most part, don't have a clue. They don't want one or need one either. They're happy. They think they have a good bead on things. Uh, well, why, why the big secret? People are smart. They can handle it. The person is smart. People are dumb, panicky, dangerous animals, and you know it. 1,500 years ago, everybody knew the Earth was the center of the universe. 500 years ago, everybody knew the Earth was flat. And 15 minutes ago, you knew that people were alone on this planet. Imagine what you know tomorrow. We don't have time for a meeting of the Flat Earth Society. A group of social criminals, these people in the space program, nassholes, I call them. And some of those people actually still believe the Earth is flat. Uh, so if a few of them want to believe that we didn't go to the moon, let them. Uh, it's not an issue that comes up in my presentation. Uh, you well, well, I mean, the, I mean, the, I mean, the Earth being flat—that that's clearly ridiculous. Though I've actually been contacted by some flat earthers saying I'm covering up the fact that it's it's some Atlantean conspiracy. Atlantean conspiracy. NASA. As you can see, we got a nice red serpent tongue coming through there. NASA. And there's the UN flag. Also the symbol of the flat earth. Oh, of course, if I say flat earth, then I gotta be an idiot. Right? That's what they told you, right? It's a ball. There's no Antarctica in this. <laughs> it's cold out here. Yeah, it is. It's like the South Pole. It's like the deep South Pole. If there was one, there isn't, though. No. The Peters Projection. It has fidelity of axis. Fidelity of position. East-west lines are parallel and intersect north-south axes at right angles. What the hell is that? It's where you've been living this whole time. The legislature recognize that there is a debate about whether critical the earth thinking. is round or flat. No, no, no. And you let's said, encourage critical thinking by saying there should be a legitimate debate between whether the earth is round or flat. Because after all, any idiot can walk outside we're and, not allowed, and see we're that not allowed it's flat. To this. this is very important what we're fighting for. Because I'm tired, I'm really, really tired of the manipulation. They do not tell the truth, they lie. To get to know our history books. Yes, the history books are not true, it's a lie. That's why my fault. The history books are lying. You need to know that. You must know that. Steroid Santa Claus kicks and deals. It's a long fly ball going back, back. And the ball shatters the sky, bringing the ocean itself down into the stadium. Oh, Simpson just broke this dream's reality wide open. You know, there's going to be some comedians making jokes tonight, but uh, I want to talk about the joke that's on you. German cartographer Mercator originally designed this map in 1569 as a navigational tool for European sailors. The map enlarges areas at the poles to create straight lines of constant bearing or geographic direction. So it makes it easier to cross an ocean. But yes. it distorts the relative size of nations and continents. Are you saying the map is wrong? Oh dear, yes. Uh, look at Greenland. Okay. Now look at Africa. Okay. The two land masses appear to be roughly the same size. Yes. Would it blow your mind if I told you that Africa is in reality 14 times larger? Yes. Here we have Europe drawn considerably larger than South America. When it's 6.9 million square miles, South America is almost double the size of Europe's 3.8 million. Alaska appears three times as large as Mexico when Mexico is larger by 0.1 million square miles. Germany appears in the middle of the map when it's in the northernmost quarter of the Earth. Wait, wait, relative size is one thing, but you're telling me that Germany isn't where we think it is? Nothing is where you think it is. Where is it? I'm glad you asked. 
Okay, so here's the, uh, the picture of the Earth from, uh, from space. There it is. Since you were a kid, you've seen this image. But uh, you've never seen it from that point of view. You know what? We adopted this whole model like four or five hundred years before the airplane. Four hundred years before the airplane, pretty much. Like, what, like, beginning of the 1900s? They went to the North Pole in the 1900s. This is 1482. Nobody went to the top of the globe, to the bottom, or flew up, or built a skyscraper until... It's funny, back in the 60s when, when they went to the moon, this is the first time we actually had like an instrument of flight to actually go high enough to actually fucking check out if what we agreed to 500 years ago was real. So if they were wrong after 500 years, the question is, would they tell you? 1969, first lunar mission to the moon. You know, the first lunar mission to the moon wasn't so much about going to the moon. It was about having an event so you can go high enough to take a picture after 500 years to prove it was a ball. <laughs> and they had as king over them the angel of the bottomless pit, whose name in Hebrew is Abaddon, but in Greek, he has the name Apollyon. Mr. Armstrong, Bart Several, ABC Digital. Wanted to give you the opportunity to swear in the Bible that you walked on the moon. The two most watched televised events in history, the moon landing and the towers falling. You have $5,000 cash. You can give it to charity if you swear on the Bible that you walked on the moon. Please I have a cake. It'd be fine. Why don't you I swear won't. to, why not? Why won't you do it? And it's funny when you click on Google Images, photo of the Earth, you'll see 40 pages on Google. But it's always the same fucking photo. For those that believe in the Bible, the Bible does mention the edges of the Earth, the four corners of the Earth, and how Satan brought Jesus Christ to the top of the mountain and showed him all kingdoms of the world. How can Satan show Jesus all kingdoms of the world if the world is round? How can there be edges of the world if the world's a sphere? The Bible also mentions how the earth is immovable and is set on pillars. So for the believers that still believe in the ball earth, the round earth, got to reconsider according to science and the satanic system the earth is supposedly tilted at a 23.4 degree angle off vertical and that leaves you at 66.6 .6 degrees off horizontal now what are the chances of that Moon landing, 8.17 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 1969. Isaac Newton, 1666. 666, Most people saw the lunar landing and they're, they swear on it because they heard it on the radio. <laughs> CBS put up screens all over in Central Park, along with NBC, you know, so they could work with Group think dynamics. Reality is reinforced by group dynamics. What you see in that? The, uh, the zero G illusion, also, that you see astronauts, uh, they look like they're floating or flying in space. It's achieved through three different ways. 
one way is through zero-g planes. Uh, they're just Boeing 737s specially outfitted to do these parabolic maneuvers where they, they do a, a parabolic and then you have a zero-g like free fall state where it seems like you're floating for about a minute at a time you can keep this this going um, the second way when they're like at the fake international space station uh, fixing things outside of it this is done in a pool in a dark pool they're actually underwater um, and you can see bubbles rising out of the pool uh, proving that they're in a pool in many of their spacewalks uh, so, so the outside space shots are done in the pool the inside uh, uh, most of the inside shots are done in zero g planes and then some of the longer inside shots are done with a green screen and harnesses so they just kind of float on a harness in front of a green screen and with these three methods they're able to produce the uh, zero g effect that everybody thinks is uh, them floating around in space uh, but in reality uh, anything that goes up comes right back down there is no point where you can just go up 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 and then oh I'm floating now, and I get to float through infinite space now forever. That's the illusion. That doesn't happen. You will always come back to the Earth. You'll always fall right back down. No matter how high you go up? As high as, high as any non-NASA source has gone. right there this is an official NASA photo of the first Apollo 11 lunar module landing on the moon I mean it's right there this is proof man it's the picture's right there it's landing on the moon but the only problem I have with this picture is that it's taken from the moon I don't know what the big deal was with being the first guy on the moon uh, it seems the camera crew was already there hey all right do you see Photoshop yes yeah. Okay, and if those of you who think this technical difficulty was planned and think I'm scamming you, go do it for yourself. <laughs> I'm going to zoom in on the Earth in Photoshop. Do you see the Earth? Yep. Okay, I'm going to go to Image, Adjust, Levels, and I'm going to bring the levels over here. And I'm going to bring the levels up. Uh-oh. What is that? Oh, wow. Yeah, wow. Why is there a square box around the Earth allegedly taken from the scientists on the moon in Apollo 17? Then you got other pictures like this, the blue marble, right, that, are, that have come out. Okay, well, there's a big problem with the blue marble, and I'm going to zoom in here and show you what the problem is. These are all composite images where they are really not very good at Photoshop because they're using the Photoshop clone tool to replicate clouds. This is an official photo from NASA. But of course, how many people think that's a photo? But of course, how many people think this is bullshit? <laughs> now, a lot of people's first question is going to be, well, where's the edge? And I was surprised to uh, see how easy that is to rectify, but it, I'm sure you get that a lot. How do you tell people when they come at you with, well, where's the edge? Why aren't people sailing off the edge or whatever? So in the flat Earth model, the North Pole is in the middle and the Earth is a disk shape and the Antarctica is all the way around holding the oceans in. And so it's a fact if you're at the North Pole and you go south, no matter which uh, actually, it doesn't matter where you are. If you go south, eventually, you're going to end up in Antarctica. But on the ball model, it's just a little ice continent underneath the ball. Yet in this model, it's all the way around you, holding the oceans in. As for whether there's an edge beyond the Antarctic ice plateau, this wall that holds everything in is about 100 to 200 feet tall. And once you climb up on the ice wall, it's a plateau of snow that just goes on and on and on. Uh, and the public and myself are ignorant at the moment as to whether it, there is an edge at some point, whether there'd be a barrier, a dome, uh, as 
that many ancient cultures have said there is, or whether it's an infinite flat plane and it's just snow, ice, wind, and darkness forever. Please stop what you're doing and listen. This is not a drill. your poisons from spreading, your government has sealed you all within this dome. Our best guess puts the dome at 20,000 feet, sir. Did he just call it a dome? You think we might be stuck in here a while? I think that even if what's wrong suddenly becomes right, the army's just gonna quarantine this place. I want roving death squads around the perimeter 24-7. I want 10,000 tough guys to... Let me out! Let me out! I wanna... What's the most resilient parasite? An idea. A single idea from the human mind can build cities. An idea can transform the world and rewrite all the rules. Which is why I have to steal it. Never recreate from your memory. Always imagine new places. He's hiding something and we need to find out what that is. We gotta break out of here. Give him the kick! This was not a part of the plan! Wake me up! Wake me up! The whole flat earth um, idea, is that a, uh, a new idea? How long has this been around? No, the flat earth was worldwide for thousands of years um, before this spinning ball earth came around. The first person to think of the spinning ball earth was also uh, the first Freemason, Pythagoras of Samos. Most Freemasons uh, trace their um, ancestry of a fuel back to Pythagoras as being the first Freemason. Um, and that was 2,500 years ago. But his idea didn't catch on at all until about 500 years ago when Copernicus, another Freemason and Jesuit, uh, wrote his book um, promoting this spinning ball earth and uh, concept. And then Kepler and Newton and Galileo, they took it from there. And now NASA and um, RASA and all the other space agencies, they're experts like Carl Sagan and Neil deGrasse Tyson. They're continuing this heliocentric spinning ball earth gravity myth that's been going on for 500 years and they keep adding on to it now. Now you've got a big bang and evolution and aliens and come out and say they've found life on other planets soon. They've already given us fake pictures from Mars claiming that uh, there's a pyramid and sphinx on Mars trying to cement this alien progenitor propaganda into us. So are you saying there are no aliens? Not in the sense of extraterrestrials, since there are no extraterrestrial places. Earth is the only material plane. It's a plane, not a planet. And the planets are just stars. That what we call planets today were known for thousands of years as the wandering stars. They differ from the fixed stars in their relative motions only. Uh, all the fixed stars and the constellations, they, they're fixed together in, in uh, their patterns as they revolve around the heavens. But the planets, as they're called now, uh, used to be known as wandering stars because they seem to wander their own unique paths. Um, they just spiral around the sun and they have kind of a spirograph orbit uh, 
you can see in one of my videos called the ancient flat earth beliefs a model of it uh, to give you an idea but with the naked eye or with the telescope you can see for yourself that these so-called planets are just stars they're just lights in the night sky they claim that the planets are physical terra firma that you can land on and potentially live on and they also claim that the stars are distant suns in galaxies trillions of light years away now, these light years are things that they've come up with to try and convince you that those lights in the sky aren't as close as they actually are they want you to think that the nearest star is actually 25 trillion a mile, uh, trillion miles away, and the, the reason they have to say this is because you can prove for yourself in your backyard with a telescope that the Earth is motionless. If we're really spinning around the sun uh, 200 million miles every six months, uh, we would be on the other side of the sun, right? So you can, by looking at the parallax change in the stars, see whether that's true. And there's not an inch in parallax change in any of the stars after six months of supposed orbital motion around the sun. So if that's the case, it's proof that we haven't moved. See how the moon travels at the same speed and direction as the stars. They all move together as one, and that's not possible if you believe the official narrative that the moon is a lot closer to the earth than the stars. They'd all be moving at different speeds. This is the camera is the earth. And there's no way that those stars would move at the same speed and trajectory as the uh, as the moon. Why why all this deception? So what we've got now is a godless Big Bang, a a nothing for no reason in no time exploded and created everything. And then a bit of the everything turned into self-replicating bits and life spontaneously created and order and intelligence and consciousness all came into existence. Uh, so we've got this cosmology that comes from nothing. It's atheistic. It's nihilistic. It makes it, makes it as though humanity and earth and everything here is just a cosmic accident. It's purposeless. It's meaningless. Uh, that's why this kind of atheistic materialism is rampant nowadays because this kind of metaphysics is what we're being taught um, so if you know if we're just on, in the corner of some galaxy and the fingertip under the dust of <laughs> the fingertip of of the universe then, then you know we don't mean anything so what it does is it spiritually crushes humanity so that we just think that um, you know me, me, me is all that's important because this life is meaningless, God doesn't exist, we're just a bunch of primordial soup that turned into monkeys and then monkeys turned into humans, you know, they, they got us believe in just a bunch of nonsense. The, the overall reason, if, if you're a psychopath, like the people who do control this world all are, then what you want, your, your ultimate goal is world domination. The best way to achieve world domination is through propaganda and mind control. So the way to mind control someone, if you've got them in a cage since birth, you tell them that the cage is the only thing there is, and everywhere else you can't go. You can't go to the North Pole, and you can't go to the Antarctic without government approval and licensing. They have little tours where you can go and take little photo ops, but you can't go yourself and explore what's actually at the North Pole. Maybe I'm being set up for something. Kristoff, why do you think that uh, Truman has never come close to discovering the true nature of his world until now? We accept the reality of the world with which we're presenting. It's as simple as that. Get away. See some of the world. Explore. I like to be an explorer, like the Great Magellan. Oh, well, you're too late. There's really nothing left to explore. You want to be an explorer. This will pass. We all think like this now and then. They're pretending to tell me what's happening! They had to shut her down. Thank you for your help. You're welcome, Truman. Locked at every turn. They go around the block. They come back. They go around again. Meryl! You're part of this, aren't you? You are scaring me! You're scaring me, Meryl. If his was more than just a vague ambition, he was absolutely determined to be 
discover the truth, there's no way we could prevent it. Christoph, I'd just like to say one thing. You're a liar and a manipulator, and what you've done to Truman is sick. Well, we remember this voice, don't we? How could we forget? Sylvia, do you think because you batted your eyes at Truman once, flirted with him, that you know him, that you know what's right for him? Maybe I'm losing my mind. I've been your best friend since we were seven years old, Truman. That feeling when it's like everything's slipping away, and the point is, I would gladly step in front of traffic for you, Truman. Truman, where are you going? You really think you're in a position to judge him? What right do you have to take a baby and 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 turn his life into some kind of mockery? Don't you ever feel guilty? Is that the best you can do? You're gonna have to kill me! I have given Truman the chance to lead a normal life. The world, the place you live in, is the sick place. D. Haven is the way the world should be. He's not a performer, he's a prisoner. Look at him, look at what you've done to him. Stresses you really is that ultimately Truman prefers his cell as your goal. Well, that's where you're wrong. You're so wrong, and he'll prove you wrong. No, I am with you always. Even unto the end of the world. <laughs>